sais pas un peu de, de français, mais ma femme a pas dit que euh, ma pensée c'est nul. Donc, so, uh, I would like to present some work that we've been doing this summer, um, Francois, my partner and I. Um, how, if, how many here have, do you know about the, blip, the blockchain? Blockchain, okay, so we got, okay, great. So, um, Okay, so my name is Richard Catano, come from California, living in France. Uh, author of a, a new book coming out next couple of weeks called Learning Bitcoin. Uh, developer of the app called BTC Report. It's been out since 2011. And as of this year, uh, we're starting a new company in Paris called Stratum. And we're looking to leverage the blockchain uh, to help increase uh, transparency, uh, ease of audit, and um, make, in general, software more uh, difficult to, to manipulate and to corrupt. Uh, we believe in the, the blockchain's power to do this, and so if we imagine the blockchain as the underlying technology behind Bitcoin, we can imagine, because Bitcoin's uh, able to exist today, that we can use blockchain's power in other ways. Um, so I'd like to talk about a quick story. Uh, Twelve years ago, I used to work at a pistachio, factory, and uh, it's a great big operation. Uh, they claim to be the largest in the world, and uh, this is in the central California, so many, many thousands of pounds of pistachios are processed. But if I were to simplify the process, you'd have farmers who bring pistachios into the plant, and you'd have uh, graders who actually separate the pistachios and weigh them, and so you have a long, long list of attributes. And at the end, there's all these specific contracts for each farmer, and they all get paid a certain amount depending on their weight. And it's, it's very, uh, how should I say, it's a very intense business because if you stain the pistachio, like you want the pistachio to be nice and white. And the Japanese pay the most amount for the white baked pistachio. So if the pistachios aren't processed and they're not taken care of properly, they, they get damaged. So anyways, this is a very intense process and I was in charge of writing the software systems to manage this process. And, um, at each step of the process was very important because the government was watching. So when you weigh the pistachio, like how much did it weigh, it had to be recorded. Uh, each attribute had to be verified, uh, and of course the payments. And and no matter how how secure we tried to make the software system, it still wasn't good enough. At the end of the day, we still had to have paper at the the scale house. We had to have stamps, files. You know, and then Deloitte would come out and do an audit, you know, and, and just like, what's the point of having software if, if we still have to do all this manual paperwork? And so the idea of bringing the blockchain into the enterprise is very interesting to us. Um, and I'd like to cite something from uh, The Economist, um, referring to the financial crisis of 2008. With half a decade's hindsight, it is clear that the crisis had multiple causes. The most obvious is the financiers themselves, who claim to have found a way to banish risk, when in fact they simply lost track of it. They just lose track of it. Everybody's buying and selling, and next thing you know, like the risk factors are it's just so complicated, nobody knows what's going on anymore. And so in today's world, we see a great opportunity uh, to bring um, blockchain technology into the enterprise, into finance, into banking, into different sectors. And um, what we're focusing on is we're focusing on building a platform on top of the blockchain for developers to make it very easy for them to build apps that are much more transparent, much more secure. And uh, I'm going as fast as I can here because I don't have limited time. And I wanted to give a quick demo at the end, so I'm going to rush through some of this. Uh, but as you guys know, blockchain, you know, cryptographic proof, resilient network, transparent ownership. So Stratum is about taking these things and bringing it into the enterprise so that developers can, can build off of it. Um, some more quotes we can talk about later. <laughs> so Stratum, Stratum is basically a stack of technology. At the bottom we have blockchain, and blockchain is the proof. We build uh, on top of the blockchain because we trust it. Period. That's like it. At the top we have the client apps, and we hope developers will use our toolkits to integrate their apps <coughs> with these middle layers here. So what we've, did, we, we've, we've designed a, a new language called ChainScript, which is a JSON-based language that brings JSON and JavaScript together and allows you to write a workflow. So the pistachio factory, imagine the three steps. We could actually write this in ChainScript. And then together with Stratum, uh, we're able to bring those scripts and record them with cryptographic proof onto the blockchain. 
And so we built this layer called the fossil layer. And if you can imagine, you know, some a, a leaf, uh, an animal dies, and all these layers of, you know, rocks. And you go back later, it's preserved exactly how it is. Same thing with the data. We're building a system of layers, and as we put data into these layers, they get preserved and they cannot be changed, cannot be manipulated. And so this opens up a lot of potential. Um, so chain script. Chain script is a, a very interesting language in the fact that it's it's a, every time a modification is made to the script, it has a link back to the previous script. So we're able to see full revision history of your data and code, both together. Um, and uh, Stratum is the mechanism that, that compiles and or just executes the chain script. And then we have these structures that we use to put this data into the blockchain. Like I said, I'm just going really quickly here uh, without taking too much. So in essence, if we were to sum up what we're doing, we'd say we're bringing JavaScript to blockchain. And we see a lot of potential in this. Um, we've been working hard this summer. Uh, we've delivered some proof of concepts and we've been testing ideas and researching how we can pull this off, how we can actually make this real. And uh, today we have ChainScript, Stratum, and Toolkit working, and we have some examples. Uh, we're, we're actually able to take a PDF document and describe it in ChainScript and embed the ChainScript into the document. And so this document can be transferred between owners, and it can be tracked any changes, and it can be signed digitally, cryptographically by four or five, I many people you want. We created a digital petition with one million signatures. It took six days to generate one million digital signatures with a computer, but we were able to do this and embed it in with ChainScript. And I have a tic-tac-toe game that is completely written in ChainScript um, that I'd like to show uh, here. So I think, let's go here. Demo time. Okay, so I'm gonna, who, who here are developers? Yeah, oh, okay, maybe you can help the guys next to you. <laughs> Okay, so you guys know the game Tic-Tac-Toe. Um, we wrote this because it makes sense in the sense that you have two people playing and they need to have cryptographic proof that they're playing with the same people and that the, the people cannot uh, change the rules, people cannot uh, cheat and make invalid moves, etc. So I'm going to set up a quick example here. Um, let's see here. Okay, so I've got... I'm going to do this split screen. Okay, and then so on the on the left, this guy's going to start a game, and this guy's going to join a game. And as you can see, we this guy who's starting the game is putting his private key. This is a normal Bitcoin address. This is standard Bitcoin address. And because this is his private key, um, he's the only one that can play from this side. But he puts his opponent's public key. So this is a standard Bitcoin address, and the this is the private key for the opponent. So we're taking the public address and we're putting it here. We're going to start a new game with these two keys. And then, let's see. So, um, uh, let's put the lab is on to the coin. Okay. So, okay. And I just want to, so this is, this is actual chain script down here. And as you can see, it, there's some like, information about the game and some <coughs> metadata. And I, I won't get too much into it, but uh, as you can see, down here we have the actual uh, JavaScript embedded into the chain script. And so these rules are fixed into chain script and cannot be modified. That's what makes it very powerful. So if I were to play it, uh, let's see, I'll just, I have to take this guy here. Uh, join. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make a quick move. So I select here, and then what I'm doing as a developer, what I would do is, as I'm interacting with my app, I would write the chain script out. So when I click here, I'm actually writing some, I'm adding these commands to the chain script. So we're just saying like, here, run this script called play, which is up here somewhere, and then here are some arguments. So the player's address, public address, so I'm saying I'm the one who's making this move. I'm choosing number two, which is the zero, one, two. And then I'm signing this move with uh, my private key. So with my, with my digital signature, my opponent can verify that I was one in fact who made the move. Right? And so I would submit this. Okay, and then my opponent gets, gets an update. And of course you can see the changes made. 
up here. It describes the game. And then down here, I can see that, oh, the operation that was performed, so play, and then the arguments. And then down here, there's a signature. And so we, we, can, we can verify that we're playing together, and that it's actually him, because he has a key, and I have my key. We can continue playing. So I'll just finish the game out. And, okay, and submit, and submit, and one more to win the game. Yeah. Okay, so Red Player won, and um, as we're playing the game, as we're making each move, there's a new version of the chain script that's being generated. And each version of the chain script that's generated is linked cryptographically to the previous one. And so all these layers, if you look slightly down here, we have what's called some, ha we have some evidence. And this information here is going to tell us where we can go into the fossils to find the cryptographic proof. So the game that I just played right now is all completely preserved in the blockchain. And this, when I'm talking about making things transparent and making it easy to audit, and making it um, like uncorruptible, like it's fixed forever. Uh, this is the example we can give. And um, see, what I want to say about this? We see so many applications where this can be very helpful in enterprise. Uh, I mentioned the banking sector. I mentioned um, uh, IT, uh, enterprise, pistachios. We can help. Um, uh, so, anyways, um, any questions? This is, this is a really fast demo, so um, that rushing, yeah. Do you, have a, do you have a size limit of the size of the script? Right now it's 100 kilobytes. Maximum? Yeah, yeah. So, but, so what we did for the, so the 1 million signature petition is actually um, 3,125 scripts, about 95k per script. And so each script has about 320 signatures in it. So you can actually take chain script and fan it out. Yeah, so this case right here is just sequential. But, but you can actually take this game and branch it out and have different kinds of rules and have like tournaments or something. I mean, we can, you can do anything you want with it, basically. Yeah. What, what blockchain are you using? Oh, right now this one's on the, uh, well, this, this one's on actual Bitcoin. But we have other features that are available that's on, on the test net. The fees for the transaction? We pay the fees. Okay, how much is the fees for the Yeah, validation? so we put one transaction in every block. And then we use a Merkle tree coming out of the block, or at that transaction. So we can have a virtual unlimited amount of data. And so we pay like uh, 0 0.0005 cents, good cents. But um, as a, we would offer this as software as a service, so our, our, our clients would just pay like a, a subscription fee. Yeah. However, there are some cases where you would have to pay the fee um, if you're doing a color coin transfer or something like that. Uh, normal Bitcoin transaction. Yeah. That's it? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, yeah, you keep using the word blockchain, not uh, maybe, I don't know if yeah. you mean it, but you avoid the Bitcoin world. Uh, do you think this kind of application are possible on another blockchain? Because if you use uh, private blockchains like your banks are trying to do right now, you lose, you lose uh, all the advantages of having a secure blockchain. And uh, to me, the, the, only, the, the only place when you, where you can uh, do this type of thing is a Bitcoin blockchain. And yeah, this, I agree. This is my favorite conversation I have. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of people talking about using private blockchains. Yeah. So you take the Bitcoin blockchain software and you 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 take the source code and you build your own private network and you have your own computers running to try and act like a miner. Like this doesn't make any sense, right? This is like like who are you gonna trust? You're gonna trust this bank who has these computers? Like, no, no. You need like the Bitcoin network, and so we look at the we look at the open networks. We have Bitcoin, Litecoin, and one thousand other altcoins. Right? It doesn't make any sense to go with with, with uh, blockchains that have small uh, money networks. Yeah. And so so yeah, we are all Bitcoin only. Okay. 
So is this yeah. just marketing? Just yeah. talking about blockchain, <laughs> not Bitcoin? Yeah, just because it's like, you know, it's, it's hyped and it's, I know a lot of people are talking about yeah, it. This <laughs> way. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't make any sense to permission stuff. Yeah, yeah. So basically what, our, what we're betting on is, so if you think of the blockchain as a very secure way of storing facts, like, and a fact consists of, in the blockchain world, a date time stamp, um, um, instructions, to what to do with this fact, and, um, and, um, oh, and a signature, something saying like, yeah, I, I approve this fact, right? And so, what we say is, our, our motto is to say that you store proof in the blockchain. So data and code out of blockchain. And so we're kind of uh, in contrary to Ethereum. You know, Ethereum is trying to build a blockchain with data encoded into it. And we see this as being a kind of a technical issue because as um, if you look at the Bitcoin blockchain, it does one thing very well. It does these three pieces of information as a fact very well. If we start, oh, if we start putting more data into this blockchain, it gets larger. And therefore, we would need a, 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 an equal ratio of mining to protect it. So until Ethereum can even get close to Bitcoin size, like I don't see any equivalency in trust, right? So therefore, it make, to me, it makes sense to take the code and data out of the blockchain and only store the facts, only have the proof. And so this is, this entire system is built on that concept. 